need to hunker down and stay local. If we act now, do the right thing, we can still have a summer that is more like those that we're all used to. The province is putting in tougher rules for non-essential travel. Those who break those rules could be facing a big penalty. Massey recommends that the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine may be offered to individuals 30 years of age and older. Canada's National Vaccine Advisory Committee says it's time to start giving AstraZeneca to those over 30 as the Prime Minister gets his jab. All passenger flights coming into Canada from India and Pakistan are suspended. A new concerning COVID variant has landed in Canada. Tonight on City News is the government's reactionary move to ban flights too little, too late. This particular variant initially discovered in India is more transmissible. There are just over 1,000 new cases of COVID-19 across the province tonight, and four more people have died in the last day. 486 people are currently in hospital, 160 are in intensive care. More people can now go and get a COVID vaccine. As of today, people in BC over the age of 60 can now book an appointment. The province also says anyone 18 and over can register at this point. About 1.4 million people have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine so far in BC. This is a legal order under the Emergency Program Act, and there will be consequences for not following it. But Beyond that, these measures, most importantly, can save lives. And it's in the best interest of all British Columbians to follow them. The province is cracking down on non-essential travel. It's bringing in a $575 fine for those who violate the rules. It's about bringing down virus cases, explains Public Safety Minister Mike Farnworth, who says these rules will be in place until after the May long weekend. While I'm disappointed additional measures are necessary, I am taking further action to carry us through the current spike in COVID-19 cases until more of the population can be vaccinated in the coming weeks. The tourism industry is being asked to pull the plug on out-of-region visitors and even cancel bookings that were already scheduled. That means operators of hotels and Airbnbs are being asked to take that financial hit now so we can have the summer with proper tourism. Under the new rules, Vancouver Coastal and Fraser Health will be considered one region with Interior and Northern Health locked together too, and the island a distinct zone. How it will be enforced is set to be announced next week, and BC Police Association President Ralph Kaisers is worried about what officers will be asked to do. There is an information gap and we don't know. I think they're still trying to build this behind the scenes, and obviously and I'm hoping there's going to be a lot more consultation. Kaisers points out many cops haven't yet been vaccinated. The union for RCMP members is also expressing concern about a number of issues, including risk of virus exposure. Meanwhile, the BC Civil Liberties Association says in a statement, we continue to have several concerns regarding the serious constitutional and privacy issues at stake, as well as the potential harmful impacts of this order on Indigenous, Black and racialized communities, while the Union of BC Indian Chiefs is asking for further consultation. For City News, I'm News 1130's Martin McMahon. Massey recommends that the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine may be offered to individuals 30 years of age and older without contraindications if the individual does not wish to wait for an mRNA vaccine and the benefits outweigh the risk. It's time to give AstraZeneca to those over 30. That's the latest recommendation from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization. NASI says the benefits of AstraZeneca outweigh any risks and expanded eligibility will get more vaccines out sooner. Early access to vaccination gives us a chance to vaccinate more people more quickly, protect our healthcare services, reduce risks of illness and save lives. However, NASI does say Canadians in areas with low COVID rates or those who are able to keep their risk level low by working from home 
still have the option of waiting for a Pfizer or Moderna shot. This comes as the Prime Minister and Health Minister get AstraZeneca shots themselves, both eligible now that vaccines in Ontario are open to those over 40. But Ontario says it's not lowering eligibility to 30 yet, citing supply issues. If everyone got vaccinated, you're going to get reduced hospitalizations and serious outcomes uh, because of just how effective these vaccines are at the moment. Public health also says the third wave is starting to turn downwards, crediting the progress to new public health measures and vaccinations. But they're also using a new type of model, trying to project when those public health measures might be relaxed. The chart says when 75% of people have received at least one dose of vaccine, some measures can be lifted without risking a fourth wave. If you had a lower vaccine coverage and you lifted your measures at around the same point in time when, when 20% of adults have had two doses, but overall only 55% have received the vaccine, and you lift the uh, restrictive measures, you're going to get a resurgence. The Prime Minister also announcing another deal with Pfizer, this time for COVID booster shots. Canada signed on to buy 35 million doses of COVID booster next year, with options for more if needed in 2023 and 2024. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News. All direct flights from India and Pakistan have been banned from entering Canada for at least the next 30 days because of serious concerns around a new COVID variant ravaging the South Asian nations. Today, City News learned of the first two suspected cases in Ontario, which would make it the fourth province in the country facing this newest public health threat. You mentioned you believe that the variant from India is already in Ontario? Oh, I, I saw a case yesterday. That inevitable news delivered today by infectious disease physician and scientist Dr. Isaac Bogosh, who tells City News two patients were admitted yesterday, and it's just a matter of time before a lab confirms what experts have been predicting. This newest variant, which has already been confirmed in BC, Alberta, and Quebec, is indeed in Ontario now, too. This particular variant, initially discovered in India, is more transmissible. I think there's still unknown questions are to what extent does it cause more significant or severe symptoms? To what extent do, do vaccines provide protection against this? India is dealing with a massive surge in COVID cases. They've set a horrifying global record for the highest number of new COVID cases in a single day, with more than 330,000 reported yesterday. That prompted the federal government here in Canada to announce a reactionary move. All passenger flights coming into Canada from India and Pakistan are suspended for 30 days. It has been clear over the past uh, uh, couple of weeks that there is a disturbing pattern of a much higher caseload from India and Pakistan than from other countries. The final direct Air India flight arrived at Toronto's Pearson International this morning. With passengers relieved, but worried about friends and loved ones back home with no way out. The conditions in India are the worst. Everyone wants to get out of there. For the students who are waiting there for almost months, two months or maybe years, they are not able to come to Canada. Some South Asian Canadians we spoke with today who call the Greater Toronto Area home say they're on board with the flight ban but the government should be looking at halting travel from other countries of concern as well. You know, the spread, we got to contain it. So, yeah, it's, I, I think it's a good decision. And, and not only India, I think we as Canada, we got to look at, uh, you know, all, all the other countries where the, there are hotspots. Flights from India and Pakistan with layovers in other countries will be allowed into Canada, though those passengers will have to get another negative COVID test from the connecting country. However, one MP says there's mounting concerns about the authenticity of test results being provided to border agents. A lot of fake um, tests, more and more we were seeing those documents coming from countries like India and Pakistan. The question remains, is the Fed's move too little? too late. And it will help reduce the number of cases of this new variant that was identified in, in India. It'll help reduce the number of those cases from being imported to Canada. Is it going to completely stop it? No, it's, it's certainly not going to completely stop it. But it, it does 
provide a buffer. There have been calls to halt all international passenger flights into Canada. Today, the federal government poured some cold water on that suggestion, saying that Canadians abroad have a right to fly home. I'm Adrian Gobriel for City News. A few years ago, we used to be able to see people the day of. Now it's hard to even get an appointment the week of. We have a shortage of veterinarians in the province and we need to train more. That warning from the BCSPCA, which says the problem was a long time coming, but has been made worse by the pandemic. Surrey RCMP are looking for someone who apparently followed three girls who were walking home from Riverdale Elementary School. This happened on Wednesday while the girls were heading to Holly Park. When the trio noticed they were being followed, they went into a grocery store for help. The man was wearing blue jeans, a black hoodie and red shoes and was carrying a portable blue colored speaker. Anyone who has information should reach out to Surrey RCMP or Crime Stoppers. This individual is identified as a Middle Eastern male in his late teens to early 20s. He's 5 foot 10, black messy hair, has a mustache and a stubble. He was last wearing blue jeans, black hoodie and red shoes. He was also seen carrying a blue portable speaker. Call police if you have any information. Well, more trouble for the NPA. Three more politicians have quit Vancouver's Civic Nonpartisan Association. School trustees Carmen Cho, Oliver Hansen, and Fraser Ballantyne have announced they will now sit as independents. The move follows months of controversy on the NPA board. On Wednesday, city councillors Colleen Hardwick, Lisa Dominato, and Sarah Kirby Young quit the party. They say it's because of a backroom decision that led to Park Board Commissioner John Cooper na being named as the NPA's 2022 mayoral candidate. By the way, the civic election is 18 months away. Yes, we have been much, much busier than the pre-pandemic uh, era. With people staying at home, uh, new pet owners are coming. They have lots of questions. So yes, definitely there has been an increase in volume of work. The BC SPCA is warning us that a veterinary shortage has been a long time coming. But they say now, thanks to the pandemic, it's arrived on our doorstep early. What we thought would happen was that a few years from now, we expected that the number of animals that were in homes would outpace the number of veterinarians that we had in the entire country. However, because of the pandemic, actually, that's accelerated even further with many more people bringing home uh, pets into their homes. Dr. Hatley McMicking says British Columbia doesn't have its own veterinary school. So now the BCSPCA is asking the provincial government to provide funding for more spaces for BC students at the Western College of Veterinary Medicine in Saskatoon. Until then, Dr. McMicking warns it'll continue to get harder to book care for our pets. And at the same time, vets are working harder for longer and burning out at an increasing rate. I haven't found or spoken to a single community or veterinary practice in BC that isn't struggling as a result. The vets here at Hemlock Animal Hospital are echoing that concern, saying it's a trend they've been feeling. Well, it has been a very difficult phase, I would say. Uh, this was everything was new, has never seen before. It took us a lot of time and we are still learning. Still, we are seeing new clients every day because many employers have decided uh, to keep employees working from home. So they are still seeking companionship and uh, also noticing more issues. So just how quickly can things even turn around? Even if funding is somehow made available immediately, it's still four more years before those new recruits graduate. Are we looking at what's, what's shaping up to be a fairly long haul issue? I, I wish I could say no, but unfortunately, I, I, I don't see how the situation is going to get imme better immediately. And I, I really do feel that we are going to see some things worsen before they get better. She says recruiting vets, practicing in other locations is also an option and that vets are working hard to keep up. Veterinarians are just as upset and pained by this shortage as pet owners are. We struggle with the fact that we can't take everybody in, that we can't work more hours in a day than is humanly possible or in a week. Dr. McMicking says in the meantime, the best way we can help is to try and book our appointments well in advance. In Vancouver, David Zura, City News. Hey there, it's Rhea Renew from News 1130. And yeah, I'm reporting from a video game. Why? Well, one group in BC is using Nintendo's Animal Crossing New Horizons to help kids and teens connect.
community that the BC Ed Access Society serves um, is children, youth, and families with disabilities or complex learners or others who just feel um, a lack of connection and just want some more opportunities to connect with other people around the same ages. It models a lot of pro-social behaviors. So the characters are always sharing and saying hello and offering gifts. And it's a very um, polite game. Like it's just, it's really friendly and it's, it's appropriate for everybody of all ages. And there's a chat option so you can talk directly to one another. Um, and then there's some pre prefixed talking as well. So you can choose your option of what you want to say. I do believe that they're building connections because they have shared each other's Nintendo Switch information. So they're playing with each other outside of our social group time. They're continuing to sign up. I see a lot of the same faces every single week. They're really excited about this part of their week, having this fun thing to look forward to on Fridays at the moment. So yeah, it's just been really valuable. Some of them do comment that their children feel heard and are forming that sense of belonging. And hey, there you have it. It's just one of the ways that kids and teens across BC are trying to stay connected during the COVID-19 pandemic. Pretty happy to be able to wrap up my report. So I thought I'd dance a little bit. Now it's time to wave goodbye. For City News in Vancouver, I'm News 1130's Rhea Renouf. Vancouver's news is always available on the radio with News 1130 or online anytime at citynews1130.com. Your next edition of City News is tonight at 11. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night.